So this is the internal measuring device set up in usage. The internal measuring device is what we would use for small straight rings or threaded setting rings. Um, so first you need to pull off our right angle. This is a good illustration. You do want to lock this and then lock the main carriage when we are removing and mounting accessories. Just pull these Allen screws all the way out. And pull this off. A note about these, the fit to the sides and bottom is very, very tight. So you never want to just try to drop the anvil back in. It's easy to get it wedged. So a good technique is to go from the corner where you can rock the anvil till it hits bottom and then slot it right into place. We're pulling this one off. And we want to mount in its place the holder for the internal measuring device. So same technique. Let's start at the front corner till it hits bottom. And then we will mount this using the same set of screws, using our 5 mil Allen key. There's a hole drilled through the upper portion of this so we can pass through and quickly mount those. And you do want to make them pretty snug. Once these are mounted, since we'll be working on a pretty small ring, I'm just going to choke this up so we don't have so much unsupported beam out there. Next, we'll mount the measuring head, which mounts via this post on the right side. So that just slots in, and then there's a thumb screw here to lock that in place. The cable can then come and snap into a little clip right here to keep up and out of the way. So you may have noticed this has a spring to float on. Now the reason it does that for, uh, for internal thread rings, you would use a, a T-shaped ball and the ball has to slot into the thread form. So in order to find you know, dead center on whichever thread you're measuring, you want this to be able to float a little bit. So you have reference marks here and here. You can adjust the spring pressure until you find that, that neutral float balance position. For this, we'll just be doing a, uh, a solid thread ring with straight sides so we can push this bracket down and lock it into place to take that extra movement out of play. So the measuring probes for the internal measuring device come in two flavors. We'll be using the, the single ball probe which comes in two components, which just thread together. And this has a mounting post and a small pin to locate for angle. This slots up into the measuring head. And then using our small Allen key, we lock that in place. So this is secure and it has a little bit of fore aft flex. Next we want to mount up our reference master ring, which is just low enough. So we want to use a nice accurate ring for this because we're going to set the ball constant for the machine, which tells it how large our probe is, and we're going to be using that number to go and measure a different ring. So first we want to make sure that our table is locked in place using these two knobs on the back. We want to make sure these side set screws are locked down because we don't want the table to move. We want our left measurement and our right measurement to be very, very solid. And we will lock the ring down to the table using some quick clamps. One in the front and another in the back. On the software side of this, we'll want to go ahead and press this icon here which kind of looks like a t-ball probe. This opens the internal measurement or dynamic internal measurement window. So you can see we have our, our x-axis readout represented here. The u-axis is just the readout from the scale inside the internal measuring device. And then xu would be the cumulative result, you know, taking both axes into account. 
So first we'll crank the ring up to our desired measuring height. We'll loosen the lock on the carriage there. And just come into contact on the left side. You can see there are two diamonds which kind of move to a, a green reference band on the screen. So once we get that close, we then want to check to make sure our ring is tilted properly and we're on center. So we'll want to use the y-axis adjustment first to sweep and look for the lowest number we can find on our XU portion of the readout. All right, so that's climbing back up. It doesn't matter what the number is here, so we're going to be taking a relative measurement left to right. We just want to find the lowest number available. I think I've passed it a little bit here. All right, I think that's our, our left side low measurement. What we can also do is use the Z to make sure that our ring is square to the measurement being taken. We don't want to be taking you know, a diagonal across the ring. We want to make sure we're taking a good straight diameter. Um, so what we can do is basically use the device as a test indicator, sweep up and down the left side of the ring to make sure that our, our measurement doesn't change. So I'm noticing that as I go down, the number is dropping, so the whole ring is tilted kind of to the right. So I'll just back off a little bit on the tilt. Climb back up. That's still the trend. Back off a little bit more. Slightly less of a trend. Now this is something that has to be done because the, the top and bottom faces of a measuring of a setting ring are not necessarily calibrated. They're not part of the same strict requirements as the inner diameter. All right, I've gotten to a point where we're only seeing a couple tens of millionths of variation going up and down the side of the ring, so we're, we're pretty square to the, the um, the vertical and horizontal position of the, the ring bore. And we've already swept for our center position. So now what we can do is press this question mark here. So with the dynamic internal measurement window open, the question mark becomes uh, a wizard for setting the probe constant. Let's drag this over a little closer. So the first item here is our ring diameter which we want to enter as the inch equivalent to 40 millimeters, which is our ring size. It's going to be 1.5748. And the bottom right button here will lock that in as our reference master size. Next, we want to set our measuring pressure on the ring just right. So we've got two little icons here. There's the, the white diamond icon, and once that's inside the green band, our fine resolution, the red diamond icon will show up. And we want to use the fine adjust to get those both inside the green band. Once they're both there, you can see a green check mark appear. That means our force is right, and the machine is ready to take that measurement and lock that in. So we'll use the next row down on the wizard here, use the min. So that takes our current XU position and drops it there. Since this is a single ball probe, we don't have to do a sweep on the right side. A two ball probe, we can't guarantee that it's perfectly in line, so it's good practice to sweep on both sides. We'll bring that into contact here, get close with the course adjustment, lock that, and then tune it in using the fine adjust. Once we have a green check mark on the right side, 
we can lock in the max measurement and then the bottom row represents our probe constant which is a little bit smaller than the diameter of the ball so once the left side measurement is locked in the last row represents our probe constant our ball constant which this being a five millimeter ball roughly two hundred thousandths of an inch um, and that's going to be minus any flex in the system so it's always a little bit smaller than the raw diameter of the the measuring probe so if we come down and hit the the bottom right button here you get a little pop-up says preset that will take that value and lock it in as our preset value <clears throat> so that locks it in as preset number one once we have our probe constant locked in as a preset now we can measure a ring Thank you.